Eros, the eternal god of love and desire. With his bow and arrows, he would become the messenger of love, both divine and mortal. Though young and sometimes portrayed as a mischievous child, his power was immense. After Ares and Aphrodite were caught in an act of impure love, they were trapped in Hephaestus' invisible net, where they were intended to remain imprisoned for eternity. However, out of pity, Zeus released the unfaithful couple on the condition that they were forbidden to see each other again, for their love was impure and could never happen again. However, the gods did not comply with what the god Zeus said and continued to see each other secretly, giving themselves with desire, because their love and lust were so great that they did not mind breaking with the designs of the king of Olympus. Thus, the gods spent many years together, and from their love five children were born, Anteros, Dimas, Harmonia, Eros, and Phobos. Eros was born with his mother's beauty and his father's courage, but he also had something that was uniquely his own, a pair of wings, soft as silk, but strong as steel. From a young age, Eros showed a taste for mischief and playfulness, with a smile always on his lips and a spark of amusement in his eyes. As a gift from the god of the forges, Hephaestus received a mighty divine quiver with arrows so powerful they would be feared by any god and mortal. He grew up fast and soon proved to be an excellent archer, just like his father. But instead of weapons of war, Eros possessed magical arrows, some were of gold, so golden and beautiful that they caused instant love, and others of lead so gray and dark that they caused rejection. Eros loved to fly over the land and seas, spreading the love with his golden arrows and causing scorn with his leaden ones, sometimes for fun and sometimes for justice. He enjoyed watching mortals and immortals fall under the sway of his arrows, often leading to love stories so intense they would become legends. Eros knew that the love he spread was essential to life and the continuation of all things. Thus, the son of the goddess of beauty and the god of war, he became the chosen one to be the assistant to the goddess of love. Although Aphrodite and Ares did not always agree with Eros' antics, they were proud of their son. Ares admired his bravery and Aphrodite loved his ability to create love. In a distant land, there was a young girl named Psyche, whose beauty was so extraordinary that people began to compare her to the Lady of Beauty. The people stopped worshipping the goddess, turning their eyes towards Psyche, which provoked the wrath and jealousy of the divinity. Aphrodite called her son Eros, the god of love, and ordered him to make Psyche fall in love with the most despicable and disgusting creature in the world. However, when Eros saw Psyche, he was so impressed by her beauty that he accidentally wounded himself with one of his golden arrows and fell madly in love with her. Meanwhile, concerned about the lack of suitors for Psyche, her parents consulted an oracle who informed them that their daughter was destined to marry a fearsome monster. Desperate, they took her to a mountaintop where they left her, convinced that the monster would come for her. Within hours, the terrifying monster came for her. This was the god Eros. Eros, in his love for Psyche, took her to a magical palace, adorned with beautiful gold and marble figures, filled with servants who were willing to help the goddess, where he visited her only in the dark of night. Although Psyche could not see her lover, her love for him grew day by day. However, her sisters, jealous of her good fortune, convinced her that she must discover the identity of her husband, for they feared he was the monster the oracle had foretold. One night, while Eros slept, Psyche lit a lamp and saw her husband, who was the god of love himself. However, a drop of hot oil fell on Eros' chest, awakening him and discovering the betrayal of his beloved. Furious and wounded, the god abandoned Psyche, who was devastated by her loss. Determined to win back the love of Eros, the girl implored Aphrodite to allow her to redeem herself. The goddess, still jealous of the young girl's beauty, decided to subject her to a series of seemingly impossible tests. Psyche, guided by her love and determination, managed to complete each task, although the test seemed insurmountable. Finally, the goddess, seeing that the woman had overcome each challenge, had no choice but to admit the young mortal's bravery and love. Eros, still deeply in love with her, begged Zeus to allow her to join him as a goddess. The king of the gods, Moved by the couple's love and suffering, 
granted the request and made Psyche a goddess, allowing her to be with her beloved Eros for all eternity. In time, the lovers lived together in harmony, celebrating their love and overcoming the difficulties they had faced. Aphrodite, though reluctant at first, accepted Psyche as part of the divine family and learned to respect her. Apollo, the god of the sun, truth, and music, proud of his skills as an archer, one day met Eros, who was carrying his bow and arrows. Apollo, ever self-confident, could not help but mock Eros. How could a child, a god of love, compare with an archer as skilled and divine as me, a god who can control the course of the sun with his quiver? said Apollo and laughed, dismissing Eros as a child playing archer. But Eros did not laugh. With his pride wounded and a mischievous spark in his eyes, he decided to teach Apollo a lesson. He took two arrows from his quiver, one golden and one lead. The golden one, which incited uncontrollable love, and the leaden one, which sowed disdain and repulsion. One day, while Apollo was strolling through a lush forest, he came across a nymph of exceptional beauty named Daphne. Her golden hair shone like the sun itself. Apollo is captivated by the young woman's unparalleled beauty. Seeing this scene, the god Eros took the opportunity to take revenge on the one who had humiliated him. So he launched a powerful arrow of love made of gold to the divinity, while to Daphne he launched an arrow of lead, which caused contempt for the other. Apollo fell madly in love instantly. From that day on the god wanted to make her his own, and fervently believed that he had found his eternal beloved. The sun god, now blinded by the love he felt for the woman, pursued her relentlessly, begging her to reciprocate his love. But Daphne, repelled by Apollo, fled from him, desiring nothing more than to escape his insistent entreaties. When the god of light declared his intense love for her, the nymph flatly rejected his advances fleeing from his presence with supernatural speed. Apollo, moved by desire and passion, could not resist the temptation to chase Daphne through the forest. The nymph ran desperately, trying to escape the clutches of the solar god, but he was tireless, driven by the fire of his love and the desire to capture the elusive woman. As the chase continued, the desperate maiden begged her father to protect her from the relentless attentions of the divinity, for she was not interested at all as she felt a great repulsion towards the god. Peneus, aware of his daughter's suffering and wanting to protect her, agreed to her desperate request and to free her from the god's terrible desire, he transformed her into a beautiful laurel tree. When Apollo finally reached the nymph, he saw how her feet were planted in the ground. Her beautiful figure took the shape of a trunk and her beautiful face was fixed surrounded by hundreds of branches. Now it was a large laurel tree in the place where the beautiful maiden had been before. The metamorphosis of Daphne into a tree had frustrated the desire of the solar god, because he really felt love for the slender young woman. Now he had been extremely sad with an impossible love and a wounded heart. Despite his great pain, the god decided to honor the woman and her eternal beauty. The god of light took a branch from the laurel tree and twisted it into a crown, which he placed on her head. From that day on, Apollo made the laurel tree his sacred symbol, a representation of his lost love and the immortal glory of his passion. Eros, observing everything from afar, smiled with satisfaction. Though it was a cruel lesson, he had shown Apollo, and all the gods, that love is a power to be respected, a power that can change the course of lives, whether mortal or immortal. Thus, Eros took revenge and left Apollo heartbroken. Eventually, one of the most devastating events in history would be attributed to the god of love. It is said that the Trojan War was unleashed after a pair of his arrows fell on the chest of Helen and Paris. Helen, the most beautiful woman in the world, was married to Menelaus, the king of Sparta. On the other hand, Paris, a Trojan prince known for his courtship and beauty, had been appointed the judge in a beauty contest between the goddesses Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Aphrodite, eager to win the contest, promised Paris the love of the most beautiful woman in the world if he would choose her as the most beautiful. Paris, blinded by Aphrodite's promise, awarded the golden apple, the prize of the contest, to her, thus unleashing the wrath of the other goddesses. Aphrodite, anxious to fulfill her promise, 
summoned Eros and ordered him to use one of his golden arrows to make Paris fall in love with Helen. Eros, though reluctant at first, obeyed his mother's command. He took a golden arrow, aimed at Paris, and fired. The arrow streaked across the sky and struck Paris' heart, flooding it with a passionate love for Helen. Paris, now captive to his love for Helen, traveled to Sparta. With the help of Aphrodite, he succeeded in winning Helen's heart and took her back to Troy, provoking the wrath of Menelaus. Menelaus' fury over the abduction of Helen quickly spread among kings and heroes throughout Greece. All joined together to launch an expedition against Troy, marking the beginning of the Trojan War, a war that would last a decade and mark the end of the heroic age. Eros, observing the havoc his arrow had wreaked, was distraught. He had obeyed Aphrodite but at a terrible cost. Despite his grief, Eros realized that, although he could incite love, he could not control its consequences. Love, like war, had the power to change the world. And so, Eros was once again remembered as the god of love, a god whose arrows could inspire both the sweetest romance and the bitterest tragedy. Thank you.